<laughs> 22 hit? Uh, I mean, yeah, it was, it's a dead body. Stop, <laughs> stop rolling to hit it. It's dead. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> I know that I'm deep inside Nothing more but a bunch of zeros yeah! Welcome to Bards and Nobles, episode 11 I'm Brian, the Dungeon Master And we're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons, 5e Drink some beer, have some fun And uh, hopefully stay alive for the rest of the session <laughs> The town's uh, been pretty rough so far <laughs> Today <laughs> I'm joined by... Trey O'Neill. I play Captain Kraken, the, so. <laughs> the half-orc barbarian. And I'm Anthony Boyd. I play the human fighter Akua Goldmane. I'm Charles Nelson, and I play Kefrit, the half-elf sorcerer. Andrew Damon. I'm playing Theron Nalo, the wood elf rogue. Aaron Williams playing James McMahon, Count of Chesterville, the human bard. And Blake Harrison playing Steve Dragoman, the dragonborn cleric. Uh, also, guys, this episode is brought to you by Audible.com. If you go to audibletrial.com slash bards, you'll be able to get a free month on the trial and get a free book download. And one of the ones that I would recommend, speaking in the vein of Dungeons & Dragons, is a book written by R.A. Salvatore himself uh, called Homeland. It is the beginning of the Dark Elf trilogy that tells the beginnings of Dritzt, a dro elf in the world of Faerun and in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. It starts with him as he goes through his path of coming up from the Underdark and changing his ways and trying to turn his people around from their evil ways. It's a really good read. I mean, R.A. Salvatore is kind of like the modern father of fantasy that we have here in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's a lot of good stuff. Check it out. Yeah. I've heard a lot of good stuff about those books. I've never read one myself, though. Homeland, which is the beginning one, is the, is the first one I've read. And then you should listen to it on Audible. <laughs> <laughs> it is really good. It makes you it makes you really it helps you visualize a lot more of what's going on in the world of Faerun and yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. And I know the uh, the Icewind Dale trilogy is really what put Dritz on the map as far as being one of the main characters. Yeah, fun fun fact: he was actually a replacement character because the publishers didn't like the character that R.A. Salvatore had in his place. Huh. And so he came up with him just on the fly, put him in, and he became one of the most popular ones. Got his own series here in Homeland. Hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, let's jump right in. Uh, does anyone want to do a recap and kind of catch us up to where we were at? I feel like last time we covered a lot of, a lot of ground, a lot of heavy stuff happened. Uh, I'll do it. All right. Um, we arrived back at New Pi. Uh, uh, met back up with our uh, the crew's old friend, uh, Dr. Dragonman, Dr. Steve Dragonman, Dragonborn Cleric. Um, as well as Akua meeting with his father, assuring him that he's still on his pilgrimage, but he has a slight detour. Uh, they went and made an appointment with the mayor to discuss the uh, cargo that they had to deliver from uh, High Captain Salazar. And then with that, they went about their separate ways to uh, just accomplish some uh, some minor task of getting some armor redone, getting some new clothes, uh, just trying to recoup from the battles they've had and just kind of resupply. Uh, James went off and um, discovered something new about his family's dagger uh, and some uh, doing some self reflecting. Uh, then arriving back for our appointment, we talked to Mayor James, not our James, but Mayor James, who the crew had encountered many many years ago, um, and set him off on being an adventurer and resurrecting. Razor Spine Island as New Pipe as a great city. And we told him about the cargo. He inspected the cargo. We see a lot of range of emotion from James when inspecting the cargo. He removed it from our ship and told us not to leave port, uh, that we were going to meet back up with him tomorrow, uh, where he's to execute an outcast of New Pipe uh, and discuss this cargo. We had a rite of passage for all those who died in the fights and then we went and partied in their honor okay uh you guys headed out that night after the uh encounter with lord mayor james and you were headed to the gilded griffin correct yep to go party it up is it 
U6 or is it also the crew of the ship? Oh, the crew is in tow. Okay. They, they earned right. it. How many days were we at uh, sea, by the way? I need to level with them with their uh, their wages. So Okay. Uh, let's see. You left. You left Luskin. It was a day to Deep Mist. You left Deep Mist. That was two days out. Then you went from that point of the sea to New Pite. It's about eight days. Eight days? Okay. Yeah. And how many crew did we start with? You had a decent number. I believe it was like eight more than we have now. <laughs> it was, did we lose half? I think so. Because we lost 16, Tegan, Krogmack, and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18. We lost 10. 18, yeah. 18 total crew. Okay. Also lost Krogmack. Well, eh. I'm not paying Krogmack. <laughs> Pull <laughs> one out for your homies. <laughs> Just throw gold out into the ocean. <laughs> what do that for? Pay in the Sorry, dark, as you, uh, as the this entire entourage just rolls up into the gilded griffin, uh, you see it's actually a pretty. It's an it's an open uh, tavern, no walls. It's just got like uh, covering, and there's benches and tables out. And nice. it seems to be pretty lively tonight. Everyone's just having a good time, drinking, and uh, partying it up. Uh, there's a number of bar barmaids and barmen um, walking around delivering drinks. Uh, you see a couple people you know, wrestling. You see people singing song. You see people gambling. It's just this looks like the place to be at uh, at night in New Pike. Yeah, good call. Cool. All right, as <laughs> as uh, everyone files in, mm-hmm. um, I hand them each of the crew members. I hand them each thirty gold, each. Okay, and some of them look at you, and they all go off. You see, so you have a good time, boys. You see, the rat folk mainly stick together um, with kale. No, with uh, Hagar and Seven, Seven Son also with them, and they go off um, and party. Uh, Kale and Fenton, they kind of go off by themselves and go get drinks and do stuff. They go to play like darts or something. All right. I make sure that I only drink water. And okay. I look very pristine and like I don't do anything to embarrass anyone. Okay. I do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I go I go sit down with C-Nubs. And uh, the rest of the rat folk, and I order a round of drinks. Okay. And proceed to get shit faced. Gotcha. <laughs> that works. Everyone else? I um, I am going to sit near the rat folk as well. Okay. Order a, order a pint of uh, their their local finest ale. Say there. No, 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 no. It's it's on the company card, and I poke the bag of holding. <laughs> I said a pint of the finest ale. All right, start all right. with that. Calm right. down. Okay. And then a um, plate of something meaty and delicious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Food. Food for all the... Yeah, they, you guys yeah. all get food. Uh, James, Keith, Dragonman, you guys do anything in particular? Uh, you know, just joining in, in the merriment and uh, good times. Okay. Beer and steak. Gotcha. I just sit with uh, Akuna. And uh, catch up. <laughs> Akuna McEwen. Akuna McEwen. I'm just sitting there like I'm drinking water, eating a uh, respectable meal and uh, doing my best. Like I keep darting my eyes around for any followers of cord to make sure that like if anyone sees me, they're not going to tell my father I'm out here like drinking and partying. I'm All just right. like kind of slightly on edge. Do I, do I notice that he's doing this? That he's like, yeah, you notice approved? he's kind of like, yeah, he is very much being approved. All right. I, I uh, stumble over there the best that I can with a, like a full pint mm-hmm. and I put my arm around him and like as I'm kind of like pulling him around back and forth, I try to switch the pint glass for his water glass. <laughs> All right. Give me, uh, give me a sleight of hand check. He's drunk, right? You want me to- this is actually pretty early in the night, so you're not not that drunk yet. Okay. 21. 21. Give Shit. me perception <laughs> check. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not at all. 
That's oh, yeah, it's 11. Okay. Um, having ordered some of the their, their best ale in there, you've, uh, you've actually tasted something similar before. This is the uh, patented uh, lizard folk fire, fire water. <laughs> um, so everyone who's drinking is actually uh, is getting pretty messed up. Sweet. You, after, after that first swig, you drink and you realize you just took a full gulp of, uh, of some of this stuff. And it kind of like takes you, like it knocks you back a little bit. <laughs> Can I just sit it down? And I'm like, I look around. Is there any other, like any people of court around? Um, you don't recognize anyone. All right. I hammer back there. the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't recognize them, but they're there. <laughs> There's like three other ones sitting right next to them. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, everyone just continues to party. A night of carousing and drinking. A um, couple of fights break out, but it, nothing in a uh, nothing malicious. Just you said there people. was wrestling, right? Yeah, there's a little. There's like a a little dirt pit off to the side where people are like going at it and throwing down. I put my hand on on Kraken's shoulder. And I'm like, I'm gonna win us some more gold. And I go over there and I put down like 15 gold. I'm like, who wants to wrestle? Um, just, uh, you see one of, you see actually a, a lizard folk, uh, come up <laughs> and he's pretty, he's a pretty beefy guy and he comes in and he's like, I got you. And he throws down some coin too. <laughs> uh, I stretch, <laughs> I stretch myself out. Stretch? Uh, all right, let's do this. All right. Uh, he jumps in and, um, you see people start to gather and people look around and one guy calls it. He's like. All right, first one to give up or first one on his back loses. I'm going to come by and, and and pat Hakuna on the shoulder and uh, cast Guidance. Okay. What does that do? Uh, it's going to give you uh, a D4 to an ability check. It's going to add a D4 to an ability check. I feel like you're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. It only lasts a minute, though. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, if we get in combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Once you get to the combat. Some of, uh, you see yeah. the uh, the lizard man, or lizard folk, he also has a, a little entourage of his own kind of gathering on his corner. <laughs> and so um, he turns around, and they all kind of like uh, join a little huddle, and they start dancing back and forth, and they just start yelling out, and then they just, you know, woo, 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 and he turns around and jumps in. And can I just be doing like Goku style stretches, like going down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and give me an initiative roll. Yeah. You use guidance. It's on your ability check. Right? <laughs> That's for the best. 19. 19. They got you. Nice. All right. You get to go first. Hooray. And it's just a little uh, 15 by 15 foot circle. Okay, that's 15 fine. foot in diameter. I'm going to keep drinking some of this delicious drink and watch the show. I'm going to uh, just kind of do like a uh, single leg shot. Just trying to okay, take trying him to, up by the leg and just keep the wrist. I'm just trying to like get him up into a fireman's carry. Almost. Okay, so you go ahead and roll to grapple. <laughs> I missed the box. I feel like he missed his hand on that one. <laughs> missed a lot of things. <laughs> almost missed the table. 13. 13? Uh, no, take that nine. My bad. It's not a save. Nine? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he swings at you and you duck and grab him by the legs, but he immediately just sprawls out and you push him back like five feet. Uh, but you guys are just kind of wrestling and uh, hand wrestling back and forth. All right. Anything else? I'm going to punch him. Okay. Is that allowed in this <laughs> type of fighting? <laughs> I assume so. All right. I mean... I just saw people like throwing punches and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You saw people like brawling earlier. Okay. Uh, twenty-one. Is that hit? Oh yeah. This is a D four, right? Or is it yeah. just a or is it just a one? Um. Oh, you uh, as a fighter, it's one plus your strength. Oh, that's a four damage then. Okay. <laughs> he goes and tries to uh, hit you back. Fourteen. Fourteen does not hit. Yeah, right. time out. I don't have on my armor. What it, what is just my natural armor? Ten plus your dex. Ten plus my dex, so twelve. And yeah. Okay. Hits. Yeah. He, you catch an elbow right across the face. <laughs> um, as you feel like your eyes uh, and nose just sting 
um, because he hits you square in the middle of your face. And you take three points of damage. And he's going to follow up with another one. Trying to trying to blind you, get some blood in your eye. Um, 19. 19 hits. Or two more points of damage. If you're fighting a dragon, there should be nothing. <laughs> what are you guys all doing? Are you guys watching do, him? Do Chandler? I notice him? Yeah, at this point, you notice a crowd gather off to the side, uh, and you see uh, him fighting. I'm just a cheer. Right. I am going to cast haste on him, but I'm drunk. So hopefully I, I target the right person. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Are you trying to set up your own fail caveat? <laughs> That's what it sound like to me. Um, let's see. All right. You cast it. Let's see. You have a percentage chance of hitting one or the other. You kind of look over, you do your hand motion and your spell and Akua, you feel like this, this burning of energy inside you, like you just you just popped back three five hour energy drinks, <laughs> and you are you are fifteen hours of energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cumulative effect. But <laughs> Keith, go ahead and give me your roll for <laughs> wild magic. The shows up in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna know he did magic. Fifty three. All right. Everybody within a five foot radius dies. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Ooh. Well, get out of here. Oh, I hope it's something good. Well, that's no fun. Oh. Uh, <laughs> re-roll. <laughs> no, uh, as you cast your spell, you begin to feel your head uh, clear, um, and you sober up instantly. So you go from, <laughs> from being fully, completely in the moment to being completely sober, and you're actually immune to being intoxicated by alcohol <laughs> for the next... <laughs> Seventeen days. Nice. Good uh, God! I put my hands together and I say, "I'm sober now." <laughs> <laughs> Get into a drinking contest. <laughs> <laughs> he cast buzzkill on himself. <laughs> <laughs> but what does haste do for me? Um, it, it makes you. Oh, wait, your speed is doubled. You gain a plus two bonus to AC. You have uh, you get an additional action on each of your turns, and it can be used to do uh, an attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object action. So that's you three attacks. Yeah. So technically, my action surge, surge. I can also do four. I can do four attacks in one round. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and grappling just replaces one of your attacks. Dope. Question, Brian. So yeah. with action surge, that gives him basically a whole new round. No, no, that gives him an additional action, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, mm. if you use the extra action from haste, you only get one attack. I knew that. I was just worried. I was thinking like action surge is a way to basically give yourself two turns. That's what I thought it was, but I was mistaken. Oh, so you were wondering if he got the benefit of haste twice. Yes. I don't think so. I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> you get 30 attacks. Per turn. <laughs> All right, is it my turn? Man, it is so currently fast. your turn. You guys are just kind of, you know, doing the doing the dance, uh, feeling the spacing out between you two, swinging, dodging, fainting. I want to know. I'm just going to bob and weaving this, and I'm just going to unload four attacks on him. All right, and you can tell, even him, he's he's moving slower. You feel super fast. You can see like every twitch, every move he's about to do. You see it happening before him. Uh, what were you 17? Saying? What were you saying? Oh. I was going to say, are, is, is anyone in the room noticing or caring that he's getting spells cast on him in the middle of the brawl? Mm -hmm. So far, no one's really noticing or caring. Okay. <laughs> 17? Do, do you take notice? Yes, it does. Okay. Takes yeah, another I four notice. damage. Do you take notice? Oh, I take notice. He's moving <laughs> faster. <laughs> She's just hardcore training. All right. Next mm -hmm. time. That's a natural one. Okay. Point yourself <laughs> in the mouth. <laughs> you, uh, you, in your like heightened speed, you're just getting super excited and, uh, you throw a jab at him, punch him. Uh, you throw another one. Um, and it just, it swings wildly and you kind of overextend your elbow a bit and tweak it. Mm -hmm. your hands are just moving way faster than you're uh, used to. 17 again. Yeah. It hits. All right. Takes another four. 
All right. My last one, I'm just going to try to, like, I've been doing, like, some quick jabs. I'm going to take it just to try to just stomp towards his knee. Just trying to just okay. jab his, just kick his knee back. Ooh, that is an 18. All right. Yeah, it hits. It's another four. Okay. Yeah, you slam into his knee, and you guys hear this <laughs> as you see his knee kind of buckle sideways. Um, um, but he kind of staggers back and snaps it back into place. <laughs> um, all right. And you can see he's kind of getting scared. Like he's not sure what's going on. Uh, seeing you attacking with this, uh, renewed vigor. <laughs> and, oh, I'm sorry. He was, uh, he goes to just wrap you up. He goes to bear hug you. Uh, give me a strength roll. Oh man. God. <laughs> Eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, you swinging wildly over him. He runs in and grabs you and gets behind you uh, and just has lifts you up off the ground. Suplex. Okay. <laughs> um, what's your AC? Right now it's a 14. Okay. Real five. Um, he just kind of tries to squeeze you and you can tell he's just trying to sling you around. Like his, his goal is to slam you down. But you're able to kind of resist and, and hold him off. Uh, you're up. Okay. I'm just going to try to just sling back and just like slam my head into the front of his snout, I guess. Okay. Since he's got me grappled. Roll for headbutt. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you roll? Uh, eight. Okay. Um, you try to swing, but he's kind of got you up in the air at an aw- awkward angle. And as you go to headbutt, you hit nothing but air. Okay. I'm going to try to uh, break the grapple. Okay. Question. That was my normal attack. I have an extra attack just mm-hmm. because of my fighter level. Then I have one more attack because of haste. Mm-hmm. And grapple takes up one of those. Yeah. Anytime mm-hmm. you would get in a, the opportunity to attack, you can replace it with a grapple. Okay. Or grapple attempt. attempt. 21. He maintains the grapple. I rolled a 17. He gets plus four. So he also had 21. Um, wow. But no, he matches it and just keeps you locked in. <laughs> he, has a, he has a gable grip going on. He's just oh. around your waist. Uh, I'd like to uh, cast a spell. Okay. When I get a chance. All right. Well, after uh, he finishes his attack. I'm going to try to break it one more time. Okay. Actually, I'm going to try to headbutt him one more time. I'm okay. I swear if you buff the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do about it? You're drunk. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> I was a 12. Okay. Total? 12 to hit. Oh. Oh, yeah. You said you headbutt again. My bad. Um, it hits. Okay. It's four damage. Gotcha. You throw your head back. <clears throat> this time it finds its mark. And uh, you hear him just like, <clears throat> you feel his whole snout just kind of bend backwards a little bit. Oh. Anything else? No, that's it for my turn. Okay. You said you wanted to do something. Yeah, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna cast Sanctuary. Okay. On Hakuna over here. All you, right. You need to. You need to tell you what what that's. Gonna yeah. Be let's called. go ahead. Uh, so, so everyone knows. Just, just, just so pretend everyone. I don't know. <laughs> you, ward, <laughs> you ward a creature uh, within range against attack until the spell ends. Any creature who targets. The warded creature with an attack or harmful spell must first make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're going to notice. All right. <laughs> he starts attacking other people. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I thought it would be kind of funny. <laughs> the last little thing there. If the warded creature makes an attack or casts a spell that affects an enemy creature, the spell ends. Okay, so I mean, he gets one turn to. I mean, that shouldn't affect my spell. Okay. Until boy attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. I get one round of chaos. Gotcha. Just go back (laughs) over this wording so I understand (laughs) it. Tables are stacked against this guy. I, I would like to pull out Red Rider and shoot the other guy. (laughs) Do I know spells are being cast on me? Yeah, yeah. At this point, it's noticeable from from the um, the arcane enhancements of your muscles. You're moving a lot faster, and now you feel another a warm um, glow of 
of divine energy kind of like <laughs> enter you. Yeah. I can bark. Can I call? Can I call time out on the loser guy? Sure. There's some. There's some. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Does he let go of me? Aren't you drunk right, too? So you, you call a timeout? Yeah. All right. Uh, he attempts to pick you up and slam you into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yelling. is like, I'm having spells cast on me. Do you want to keep doing this? He ignores you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is he oh. doing a wisdom save before he throws him down? <laughs> what, what do you guys say? Is grapple technically an attack? Well, grapple's Wait. not an attack, but throwing someone is an attack. Right. But he's, he's just trying to... Um, I would say the slam maneuver him. I would say the slam wouldn't count the next attack he does. Right. Okay. The next strike he would do. That's fine. <laughs> but uh, he tries to pick you up and just try to wrestle you down to the ground. Give me a strength check. <laughs> 22. All right. Yeah. You, he goes to pull you out, but you easily just wriggle out of his hand and he actually loses his fully, uh, his balance and starts stumbling backwards. Um, you're up. All right. Uh, there's like ropes or anything setting up this arena. This, this uh, it's not really. You're in the squared circle, brother. <laughs> not really. It's very <laughs> rudimentary. It's just kind of like tables pushed out of the way, and it's kind of uh, at the edge of the awning. I was like, "Are you ready?" Because uh, my human is ready <laughs> 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 from parts unknown. <laughs> no, uh, I just so he's prone. No, wanna, no, no. He's he's like losing his balance, falling backwards right now. All right, can I just like sweep the leg? Sure. <laughs> sweep the leg, Johnny. <laughs> sweep the leg, Johnny. Question. Yeah. Is Mage Hand visible to anyone other than <laughs> oh myself? My God. <laughs> yours yours is not. It's invisible. Because I you are a, an arcane trickster. The rogue the arcane trickster rogue variety has an invisible mage hand. It is the only I, invisible mage I, hand. I, 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 Gonna use my mage hand and just kind of tap him on the chest, <laughs> <laughs> just like finish tripping him. Yeah, I, just to, just I to help don't, with your trip. I don't think you can use it offensively, but I mean, you're just kind of you just kind of give him a little tap, an just a little. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I I pet him forcefully. Gotcha. What did you uh, roll <laughs> to sweep the leg? Twenty two. All right. Yeah, as he plants his leg forward or backwards. Um, you go to kick that same knee that you hit earlier <laughs> between that. And you see just this, the faintest glimmer of a hand reach across <laughs> his chest and kind of gently push him backwards. <laughs> his hands flail and then <laughs> he hits his ass. He just lays out. And then, uh, the guy calls out and we have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> I walk over it. People cheer. <laughs> like, people were other, the other people put up bets. Like, how much gold did I win? You win none because you asked him midway through the fight if you wanted to continue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I was going to kick his ass. I just wanted to give him a fair fight. 80. 80? Yeah. All right. I got to go ahead and give uh, 20 to him. Okay. Oh, so it looks like you fixed the fight. <laughs> <laughs> you hear someone yell out, collusion. <laughs> no, no uh, I was like, I just feel bad for him. Uh, no, he goes, he, uh, we just throw it at him. You, you hold the gold out and he just knocks your hand away. He's just pissed off and goes with his group and they just, <laughs> they, they leave the, uh, the gilded Griffin. All right. I pick it back up. and I'm like, Oh, there's no way we're getting jumped when we leave this place. <laughs> <laughs> I think they realized right, that would be a me. huge mistake. I'm going to schedule hour. that for later. Huge, <laughs> huge mistake. Huge. huge. <laughs> the biggest Give mistake. Give the DM I want to make sure that the bag of holding is like strapped in my chest like a fanny pack. <laughs> so that like. It's tourist uh, security. Yeah, show. yeah. Because, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a little tipsy. Yeah. But, you know. Now, at this point, it. if everyone's been drinking, uh, you guys. I mean, everyone's drinking. I right? didn't drink. Yeah. You haven't drunk at all? Okay. Also, Keith is sober. Right. <laughs> That's true. Um, two of us the night begins to carry on. People are just being more merry. They're carousing and doing fun stuffs. Uh, do you guys want to do anything else? How many people are in the bar? Um, 11 teen. I'm going to switch to uh, water. That's now. a lot. <laughs> all right. There's still about 20 or so people. And like I said, it's like an outdoor um, 20, I mean, including our crew or 20 in addition to our, in crew. addition to, all right. I, uh, stand up on the bar and I say around a round of drinks on me in memory of my brother. 
<laughs> let me uh, let me do some math real quick. And, uh, and you hear us celebrate? <laughs> the, no, no, none of the that can has- crap. The good stuff. <laughs> the tavern has. That's pop-tops. all we got. <laughs> what is this? A PBR pub? <laughs> um, I mean. <laughs> At least, at least give us the high life. <laughs> this episode of Bards and Nobles brought to you by Miller High Life. Uh, no, it's not really. No. <laughs> Speak, speaking of Miller anybody. High Life, Trey, can I grab a can yeah. I grab a high life? <laughs> All right. Uh, you're, everyone goes nuts and starts uh, passing out more ale, more fire water, and getting uh, lit, fam. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to coast for the rest of the night. I'm gonna keep my wits about me, and I got an important meeting in the morning. So. All right. Pretty sure yeah. you two are already blitzed out of your mind. <laughs> Tell me, get all their save. money. Yeah. Um, if you fail your con save, you are pretty drunk. You are out. Pretty, Everybody, pretty. give me a constitution save. Everybody, except for Josh. Except for me. Unless you haven't been drinking. Me. Except, been except, drinking. <laughs> yeah, except for Keith or Dragon Man. <laughs> what are you doing? What? <laughs> Boyd, are you really drunk? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> roll, roll Boyd to see if he has... 15. <laughs> if he's drunk. Okay. <laughs> Ten. All right. Two. Okay. 21. And all right. So, uh, Akua, you're, you were, uh, really you only had that first one. And so you got you know, a little tipsy. Um, everyone else, you're seeing two and some of you are even seeing three of everything else. You're pretty wasted. Sweet. A good night. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, good fight. taper that good off. So. <laughs> I, uh, I I get in the middle of everyone and I just start drinking too. All right. Um, all right. The, uh, gotta catch up. Caution to the wind. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll throw back some more. <laughs> Party like I'm on the swan song. <laughs> Did you say you started drinking too? No. I, oh, okay. That was him saying Gotcha. Uh, all right. Yeah, the night's winding down. It's it's getting pretty late. Um, it's after midnight. Um, the party, as far as people at the Gilded Griffin, still going pretty strong. Um, what are you guys doing? Um, at this point, um, I go to I go to settle the tab. It's time for us to get back to the ship. I'll let yeah. the I'll let the crew continue to party. Mm. Hollow Pot. Uh, he was one of the fatter um, rat folk. He's all brown. He is completely passed out. <laughs> and it looks like C-Nubs kind of was was kind just coasting throughout the night, nursing a beer. He's my anchor. <laughs> Fenton, uh, he is he's also passed out. And the rest of them are just in various other states of drunkenness and revelry. <laughs> I, uh, okay, I'm going to buy a couple of bottles to go. <laughs> and we're going to take this party back to the ship. All right. Uh, make, make sure everyone gets home safe. <laughs> no, I, uh, I was like, we can carry everybody. And I make Tennessee floating disc. I start helping pile people. Our, our <laughs> <crewmates out. laughs> All right. Nice. And uh, I, I go and settle the tab with the barkeep. Okay. One um, million gold. <laughs> Shit. Now we are the bar. You uh, had to retrieve from uh, me a very valuable <laughs> <laughs> You got any sort of quest I can go on? <laughs> Maybe I, I really like to pay in quests. <laughs> okay. Um, it's about 240 gold. 240 gold? Yeah. I put 300 down on the counter. I say, good job. <laughs> All right. Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you James know, this is not. James is screaming on the inside. You know, this is not my gold. This is our gold. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, have you seen the things we've survived? <laughs> Every time I'm, I'm talking with someone, I have like great conversation, but at the end of it, like, please don't tell my dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. What up? What up the disc? Let's get everybody home. All right. Uh, as you guys are heading back to your ship, um, just on right before you get to the pier, um, six figures are blocking your path. Of course. Uh, <sighs> you recognize them as the murder. <laughs> some of the lizard folk that you wrestled with earlier or the one that you wrestled in some of his uh, compadres well alrighty then and uh like I said earlier there's absolutely no way we get jumped on the way back <laughs> to the ship oh he's um, in action he said uh one of them leads in and says hey hey you're a cheat I want my money 
Yeah, I told you that. Tried to get you to stop. That's also, what I was talking about. Also, he offered your money back. No, no. I want all of it. God uh, damn it. I would like to... I'm going to walk up to the biggest one, and I'm going to cast Intimidating Presence. Okay, and you're going to use your Intimidating yeah, Presence? All right. Yeah. That's so I have to make a save? DC 17. All right. And I, I tell him, this is not a fight you want. All right. He's going to get advantage because you are wasted right now. <laughs> That's cool. So <laughs> I... I I see Kraken moving up, and I kind of think I know where this is going, so I'm just going to draw my scimitar slowly. Okay. Uh, he kind of looks at you in the eye, them. and uh, you say that to him. He, he takes a step back, and he's like, well, well, you guys cheated. I just I just want my money. I miss his step behind him, and I put the point of my scimitar to his back. It's like, do you really want to do this? I say it. Ah, it's okay. okay. What? How much did you? How much did you make? I made sixty. I offered him twenty, and he slapped it out of my hand. I say, here's forty. Just get out of here. All right. Give me a persuasion check right. with advantage. Well, well, I was gonna say with advantage because he has a sword in his back, but you're also slurring everything you're saying, so it's hard to understand. <laughs> so, <laughs> not twenty. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he kind of. Uh, straightens up as soon as he feels your sword behind him. And even all the guys, even though they had uh, mm-hmm. weapons and things with them, they all, you know, kind of scared, uh, pull their weapons up. And he's like, no, no, no. All right. And he takes the 40 gold. Yeah. And I say the rest of it's in the four. He slapped it out of my friend's hand. No, I picked that up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he still says that. I still say that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's where it is. <laughs> is the one that I wrestled in line there? Uh, that's the one who was talking. Oh, okay. The one that's then got a sword in his back right I now. I reach up and I, I touch his face and I say, you have beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, you, you guys are crazy. And then they, he's like, let's get out of here. And they're all I, like, I, message, I message real to him. I was like, but you still a bitch. <laughs> 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 and Susie turns around I'm like, what a trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks at you and scowls and he's just like, oh. and he walks off. Sheathed my scimitar. And by scimitar, I mean... Party on the Falcon! (laughs) All right, you guys get back to the ship. You get onto the Millennium Falcon. Uh, What are you guys doing? I'm just going to let the crew continue to party, and I'm going to go sleep, because I've got an important meeting in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go hit the hay. I shall also strike the hay. I will take first watch just in case. Okay. Yeah. That's more lizard men come back. <laughs> that I yeah. Oh, we should have got you into a drinking contest. <laughs> <laughs> right, back uh, to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> who, um, who else wants to be cheated out of money? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, most of the crew, they go and they go and turn in as well. We have 17 um, days to do that. That's true. All right. We'll, we'll go back. Uh, you guys go all to your respective rooms. Um, at this point, C Nubs and Miss Frisbee are no longer staying in the in the captain's quarters. They've okay. gone back downstairs. Sure, sure. Um, I uh, I tell them they can have one of the one of the rooms oh. since I mean I don't want I don't want her and her child sleeping with the rest of the crew. So give them room number ten. Okay. Number ten. Yeah. There's three tens. Oh. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, everyone re- retires back to their room. Um, I'm and staying on the main deck, just getting sloppy. Okay. With my floating disc, just flying it around and spinning it in circles, just oh. for just goofing around. Okay. Um, as soon as you walk into the captain's quarters, close the door, um, you go over to the cot, and you feel... Two uh, sharp, piercing pains, right in the one in the back, one in the side. As you turn and you see two uh, four, four and a half feet black hooded figures stab at you, and you take. Uh, oh, about to four damage. damage. <laughs> you take seventeen points of piercing damage. It's the murder. We're gonna get, we're gonna get murder. And you look, and you're able to push one off, and you see its hood thrown back, and it's 
the face of a large black crow with black eyes. Um, and you see a sword from beneath a cloak just like pulled out. Um, give me initiative. All right. So I can't be surprised. What does that mean? I have you had the alert awareness. feet. Primeval awareness. Oh, okay. Uh, does that mean I get I believe you that you can't be surprised. I just got to see what exactly that entails. The exception is the crows. All right. Well, because I forgot that, normally you couldn't be surprised, but you're absolutely wasted right now. <laughs> so they got the drop on you. <laughs> That's I fine. I think it's danger sense. Danger sense, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Danger! Primeval awareness, isn't that a ranger thing? No. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, um, that's an eight. Eight? Okay. So one of them immediately uh, takes his... Uh, Oh, he takes out a little uh, a bobble, this is a little glass uh, round jar, and he throws it at you. Okay. Then you got Dex. No, no, it's a it's an attack. Okay. Um, hits you for or nineteen. Does that hit? Yeah, yes. Okay. Give me a strength saving throw. Uh, that is a twenty five. Okay, you've actually felt and seen this before, uh, this type of liquid that comes out of the jar as it smashes across you, and it's a sticky, tar-like substance um, that you, you're immediately trying to just scrape off away from you as it, it's making things really uh, sticky. What, what was a hound in the bounty hunter used it? Mm-hmm. A sticky situation. Yeah. Oh. oh my god, it's your turn. Do you want to kill James? <laughs> <laughs> I go and find James. <laughs> Push, he pushes the crows out of the way. Uh, I, look, you, you guys can murder me or whatever, <laughs> but I gotta go deal with something before I die. <laughs> my last words are, kill James too. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm going to, as my bonus action, I'm mm-hmm. going to go into a frenzied rage. Okay. And I'm going to yell out... Um, Assassins, as long okay. as I can, try to get the attention of anyone else on board. Okay. And, and then I'm going to it. recklessly attack one of them. Gotcha. Oh. Do I hear the scream? Yeah. Who does uh, hear the yell? How does much? a 27 hit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody, you guys all hear the scream of uh, the Captain Kraken as he yells out, Assassins from his quarters. I would like everybody to draw it? my scimitar here. and Misty Step to the Captain's quarters. Ooh. Misty Step is only 20 feet in the line you can see. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, wait. I thought it was 30 Misty feet. Misty Step's 30 feet. But you At still least. have to see it. Yeah. Though, right? That's probably what it is. So. What? Yeah, you have to see it. Okay. Well, then. Um, is I'll it 30 just, feet or 20? 30. Okay. I'll start making my way there well, then. Actually, that was a guess. I didn't I didn't read that part. I, th- I thought it was 30. 16 damage. Okay. Okay, well, I'll start running to the captain's quarters. It is 30 feet. All right, yeah. Yeah, you you slice it, uh, slice down at him, um, and it cuts away the cloak. And you see, uh, as the cloak flitters, he uh, it's just a, a humanoid or anthropomorph- anthropomorphized cl- uh, crow standing there with a sword in one hand and a dagger uh, held reverse grip in the other. All right. How far is the captain quarters from me? Um, you guys are below deck. Uh, I went to your top rooms, except for you. And I'm, you I'm, Akua and Keef are on top. I'm on top that? too because I haven't. I don't have a room or anything yet. Okay. Is it 16 hit? Yeah. Uh, that is for 17 damage. All right, you just start hacking at him, <laughs> and he tries to block it. But each block, you just easily push the sword down against him and uh, overpower him. All right, so so no Y'all picked the wrong first target. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for real. And uh, that's the end of my turn. Okay. I, yeah. If I if I use my bonus action to rage, I don't get my bonus action attack. Right. Right. So, right. All right. Next time. <sighs> Just warming up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that was the one that threw the the thing at you that you hit. The okay. other one um, jumps forward and goes to slash his <laughs> knife with his knife as you 
right before it hits, you notice the knife is coated in some type of um, black liquid. And 19, does that hit? Yeah, 19 hits. All right, make a constitution saving throw. Ooh, uh, that's a seven. As soon as it hits, you turn to look at him with anger in your eyes, and immediately you feel your jaw lock up, and then you feel your arms lock up and your legs too, as you are uh, paralyzed oh, for ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for one round. Okay. All right, yeah, everybody, you carbonite. hear this at this point. Um, you guys, especially, I, uh, run to the captain's quarters. All right, uh, you run in and you open the door and you see him standing there basically just uh, fighting these two crows. I stumble and do my best to keep up with Keith. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm going to need initiative from everyone else now. Hooray! Ooh, that's not good. Are you staying with us, Dragonman? I'm with you right now. All right. Yeah, yeah. I definitely went running when I heard the scream. All right. Um, sorry, I'm blanking. All right. 25 through 20. Anyone? 15 through 20. 16. 19. All right. Dragonman and Akua. Dragonman runs in and buffs the crows. <laughs> I've been working with the crows the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That Just leaves... Dragonman's been 30 years and James Craig is still seven. Dick. Five. <laughs> All right. Nice. Dragonman's the head of the murder. <laughs> uh, Dragonman, you're actually up next. Um, you just saw Keith dash by and uh, Akua stumble by and the door open, and from where you are standing on the deck, you can see barely into the room, but you see Crake in there with two uh, would-be assassins. Well, I could heal him, but what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> the crow? <laughs> yeah, I, could, I guess I could heal both the crow. crows. No, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and um, cast Healing Word on old Crakey. Okay. Cranky crank. Uh, let's see here. What we got to do here? I think it 1D4. just happens. Yeah, how much? Yeah, it's just a 1d4 plus okay. modifier, Please which make is not joke. much. Please make that joke sometime. Like, cranking, more like cranky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's I think you just did. I, I kind of did, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, four points. No, wait, see. Um, plus... Does that cure my paralysis? Or am I just... No. Me? I'm just... Unfortunately, I, I feel a little have, better. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any of my of those of my uh, um, paralysis things. I think right, so I, I, right that would be that would be like restoration. Yeah. I no, yeah, I think you're actually healed for. It should be one d four. It's plus your wisdom seven. All right, because it's plus three. Nice because of my uh, life discipline. Nice, that's awesome. I, I feel sweet. I feel real good. <laughs> Paralyzed so still, good. but I say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? I'm gonna high five the crows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really confused which side you're on. <laughs> no, can I um can I close the distance anymore? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can move forward. Okay, well I'm gonna. You, how, how far did you say I am away from them? You guys were just hanging out on the main deck. You're about... I'm going to move as close as I can 20. to the... I mean, you can make it actually into the room. Okay, well, I'm going to move into the room. Okay. Yeah, you push past uh, Akua and you push past Keith and you step into the room. All right. That's what I'm going to do for now. All right. Akua, you're up. Uh, I look and I'm like... you seeing like... Blurry images and shadows just dance around real quick. I yeah, know these see, big attack. You see two oversized um, walking crows with swords and knives out. I just say, uh, yeah, what in the world's going on? And I magic missile the closest crow to me. Okay. Swear if you set fire to the ship. <laughs> <laughs> I use magic missile, not burning hands. All right, so how many is that? It's going to be 
I'll go ahead and cast it at... I'm just going to stick to first level. All right. As you... Sorry, I'm looking for another D4. There we go. Another D for what? <laughs> What's a D for? <laughs> 13 damage. Um, how many missiles? It's three. Three? All right, you take your sword and you swipe wildly, uh, barely missing Keith as he's standing next to you. And Dragonman, you see uh, three of these um, slices of, of magic made by the sword wave fly right past you. And it hits one of the crows but it actually, it stopped maybe four inches away from the crow and just foom, 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 gets absorbed into a magical barrier of some kind as he turns and looks instantly and you see his eyes light up. <laughs> what? <laughs> he cast the shield spell. I'm and going to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see that. I'm like, well, fuck you in particular. And I move up to him. I'm going to use my bonus action. Never mind. I can't. To touch my head. No, I can't. I can't do that. To think about things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just move up close to him. I just get it up in his face and it ends my turn. Okay. You run up to him. Next is Theron. Um, How far away am I from them? Um, you were laying in your bunk under... Downstairs. So it's like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, 45, I don't know. To get to Kraken's room would be about 70 feet of movement. Okay. I'm going to use dash as my bonus action. Okay. I'm going to dash into the room. All right. And you used half your movement speed to stand up. You laid down in your bunk or in your bed when you got yeah. on the ship. You said you went to bed. Okay. Well, all right. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I drew my scimitar laying down. Like I should probably get up and do this. Okay, I don't know what you. Do. I don't know your life. Maybe uh, <laughs> <laughs> I heard the scream and drew my scimitar. So I guess I I will get out of bed and make sure I don't. All right. So you you get scimitar. up to the top deck and you're um you're still a good like you're from the stairs that lead up to the main deck uh, mm. and the door and in the door right now you see um. You see Keith standing in the door. Akua has made his way in. Dragon Man is in his way in. And you can't really see past them um, into this crowded room. Of course. Um, all right. Well, then I... That's, what, another 20 feet to mm -hmm. the cabin? Mm -hmm. um, do I see enough to be able to Misty Step into the cabin? Uh, sure. I'm going to do that. Okay. Uh, you see, just kind of as far back into the cabin as possible. All right, like, I'm gonna try and get in behind the the crows if possible. Okay, uh, you missy step in and boom, boom, you s land on the other side of Kraken. And I mean this this room isn't room. really that big. It's it's a pretty small fit actually. Um, you guys are all like almost in each other's faces or on top of each other at this Sweet. point. Sweet. Um, but you have Kraken in front of you and on the other side of him are two crows and then you have Akua standing no no you yeah Akua standing next to one crow Dragman next to another one and Keith standing in the doorway okay well I mean that's that's it for my turn okay I'm James just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was in my room yeah did I did I have time to get into my pajamas with the with you the nightcap? You did not have time to get in your pajamas. Got it. So I I am in the process of doing that. Yeah, you were Do taking even you were taking on? your cloak off. Your pants are not on. You got those off first. That's the it. first thing you did. When got you it. In. Perfect. I mean, that's the first thing anybody does, <laughs> and, right? And I hear out assassin, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, whoa, and I I run out. <laughs> uh, I, I stop and I put my pants on. That's what I do. Okay. You, uh, you stumble out and pull your pants up as yeah. you make it up the stairs. You're barely at the top of the stairs. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I make sure that I look presentable before I get to the room and I see the ruckus. Uh -huh. And uh, you're on the top deck right now. And on the other side of the catapult, you see the door open. And most of your adventuring party standing either in or at the door. Okay. Got it. I just, I, you know, I go over there to them. Okay. So you crowd up to the door. Yeah, just see what's going on. All right. Uh, you walk up to Keith. 
who is at the door. Mm. And right now, all you see is Dragonman, who's pretty big Dragonborn, and Akua kind of standing in the way. Looks like there's more behind them. Can't really tell just because of how, how cramped this room looks. Got it. Is there a window? In the room? Yeah. There is, but you can't see it from where you're at. One, because it's in the middle of the night and there weren't any lights set. And two, because it's just so crowded and there's so many bodies in the way. Got it. All right. Well, then I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Keith? All right. I, uh, <clears throat> let's see. I'm going to cast a uh, hold person on the two of them. Okay. On both crows. And so they would have to, uh, I'm assuming that they're humanoid. Yeah. And if they are, they have to uh, make a wisdom saving throw against DC 17 or they are paralyzed. Okay. All right. Um, you cast on both. And you see the energy just come out of the air and encase both of them. And one of them just shugs it off. And the other one is encased in a uh, this energy that kind of just disappears. But you can tell he's frozen in place. All right. And give me your wild magic roll. Yeah. And that is a 26. Something good. All feathers in the room catch fire. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, as you cast a spell, you feel this this really this itch, this burning itch in your forehead, and a few seconds later, an eye opens up in your forehead. <laughs> oh, and that's some freaky shit. You have advantage on perception checks that rely on sight nice. for the next minute. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, who's next to you? <laughs> Dragonman, uh, Dragonman and Akua, you guys look look back real quick and you see Keith with uh, three eyes. He's got one in the middle of his forehead. It's pretty big. It stands out. I say gross. Um, <laughs> I can cut. Ooh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The one that's... It's a triclops. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's alive. It's advantage. All right. And he hits you, okay. Kraken. Is, is Kraken within five feet of me? Yeah, yeah, he swings at Kraken. I'm going to impose disadvantage on him using my protector skill. Okay. All right, um, he misses. And you, as he swings, you jump in front of him, knowing that Kraken can't defend himself properly right now because you see he's just like locked in space, but, or locked in, in his space, but uh, unable to say or do anything and you throw your shield in the way and it bounces off the shield uh as you can tell the crow starts to look around uh starting to get panicked and <clears throat> he looks towards the porthole of the room he heads straight toward or he looks straight towards it and in a puff of feathers poof, he bamps and you hear the that same noise poof, appear outside and you hear a splash of water Hmm. Kraken, it's your turn. Uh, what do I roll to be not paralyzed, or am I? Um, actually, you're paralyzed till the end of the, your turn. Okay, so I just roll to not be paralyzed, or? It, well, I mean, just, it's going to end this turn. turn. Oh, okay. Party. Then I end my turn <laughs> unparalyzed. <laughs> yeah, you can't speak. You fail strength and dex saves. Yeah. Okay. Since there was an attack made <clears throat> against me, my rage is still going, though. For this round. Yeah, that's okay. fine. <laughs> okay and then let's see oh yeah uh at the end of your turn you feel uh you feel your facilities your faculties come back to you and you're just able to move and shake things off so we all i mean are we still in initiative uh we're going in initiative order okay yeah there is got one it. we're still in combat crow. got it i was just yeah. checking yeah he's um, paralyzed also uh see the next crow goes and he touches who walked up to him he's oh, not paralyzed Wait, he's, he's paralyzed. paralyzed oh yeah you're right i'm sorry he's also he paralyzed no one. he yeah does nothing <laughs> he gets to make a save at yeah. the end of his turn okay what's your dc uh 17 it was 13 all right he stays paralyzed dragon man you're up dragon man. so <clears throat> Are we just bashing this guy, or are we going to like, do something? 
I mean, you can diddle him a little um, bit. Considering he can bamf out, I mean, I don't think we can hold him. We, we so can we might as well kill him. attempt to gag him so he can't cast spells. <clears throat> hmm. I like to cast gagging the crow. <laughs> gagging the crow. That sounds dirty. Choking the, choking the chicken. That's, you mean? <laughs> That's it. Gagging the crow. Choking the chicken. It's like choking the chicken, but way dirtier. <laughs> what spells? Ugh. Learned right now. Uh, All right, what you doing? Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna diddle him. <laughs> diddle him so hard. <laughs> Diddle is the name of Steve Dragoman's mace, by the way. <laughs> and by oh, mace, he means. Yeah, I'm a mace. You've been doing okay. it. Oh, what are the effects of paralysis? I think he, he gets advantage. Oh, you have advantage text. on the roll. If it hits, an, it's an automatic critical. Yes. Oh, nice. So <clears throat> you have to roll, roll 2d20s. Take the highest Take the highest number. Okay, so 15 plus 4 is 19. Does that hit? Yes. Hit. Okay. So, so that's a crit. Because that's a critical, you roll twice as many uh, damage dice. Nice. And then add your modifier. Nine plus. Um, what is my modifier? It's a. Uh, it's gonna be one d six plus your strength. So plus two. So nine plus two, and then I also have the bind strikes. Where's my eight? That's it. Oh, an eight. So nineteen nine plus two is eleven. Plus, yep, nineteen. That's nineteen damage. And yeah. then a nineteen. Nice. All right. Yeah, you come down, and you also had what kind of strike? Divine. Yeah, divine strike. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's radiant damage. Gotcha. So you see him pull out diddle. His, uh, <laughs> his mace that was gifted to him by the Order. And it lights up with this radiant energy. And it leaves a streak through the air as he comes down on this helpless creature. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell this. there's a sickening thud as um, it doesn't recoil, but it definitely slams into the, the creature around the neck area, neck and shoulder. And just comes crashing down, uh, burning away feathers at that spot. Um, it's still standing, though. That's all I'm going to do right now. Hmm? That's all I'm going to do. Akua, you're up. I'm going to stab him. Okay. Remember, you get advantage (laughs) on the roll because he's still paralyzed. That poor thing. That messed up. 17 hit. Uh, It does. Ooh. Eight plus five. That's also a crit. Yeah, it's a crit. Oh yeah, so you get to do double double dice damage because he's just sitting there. As you guys are just rude. you guys are all standing in this room um, over this this four and a half foot crow uh, who's motionless. That's uh, that's twenty one damage. All right, because that was that was max that was max damage. And you're Dang. using your sword. Yeah. All right, you don't even swing. You just kind of flip it up, grab it so it's reverse, and you just stab into it um, as it. Um, slides easily um, without resistance into the back of this creature and uh, its its eyes just kind of flutter for a second and it crumples to the ground. Mm. Stab it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just to be safe. Alright. Uh, yeah, you stab it one more time. And uh, you get advantage on a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> I yell out the porthole. Your friend just got wrecked. Uh, 20, <laughs> Twenty-two hit. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was, it's a dead body. Stop, <laughs> stop rolling to hit it. It's dead. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> you guys are all easily <laughs> twice the size of this thing. So it's dead. That means it loses its dex bonus to its AC, right? <laughs> <laughs> it counts as flat-footed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my cantrip to green flame blade and stab oh it. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys are all standing around, kind of relaxed, uh, but kind of Can taking I- it back at Akua, just continuing to beat <laughs> into this dead body. Um, I run not- o- can I run over to the window and see if I can like perceive? Wait, wait, wait. Are we still in initiative? Oh, yeah, are we? No. 
Okay, okay. then I, uh, as soon as he gets done, I, I, I want to do something. Okay. I, I run over to the, the window and see if I can see his friend anywhere. Okay, give me perception at disadvantage. I would like to search the crow. It's a 16. All right, uh, the only thing you see is just like a splash of water, uh, the water rippling out where something went into it. All right. Can I cast light on the entire He's boat? Gone. <laughs> I'm thinking you can cast it on an object that large. But, uh, just, is that just the lifeboat or the ship? <laughs> the ship. <laughs> can both. I search the dead crew? Uh, sure. Wait, wasn't Aaron about to do something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no larger than ten feet in any ah, direction. Okay, or dimension. Small boat. <laughs> James would like to. He heard a splash. Mm-hmm. Uh, just. Can't see into the room, doesn't know what's going on there. Here's a splash, runs to the side of the ship to look to see what the splash was. Okay. Um, you just see uh, towards the back of the ship where there's, in the water, just ripples uh, going out. That looks like something went into the ship. I don't, I don't see anything. Uh, you can give me a perception check at disadvantage. It's nighttime, it's water, it's I'm a black human. crow, and you're a human. <laughs> Do I get advantage from Natural one. Sight? Natural one. Um, you, fall you, you don't see anything and you realize because it's so dark outside you're actually still looking at the ship so you look over <laughs> and, uh, and you just see water got it <laughs> nice can I search this crow yeah this is investigation mm-hmm. 20 20 all right uh, you see just you don't find any money you find it's short sword it just looks like to be a regular short sword um the dagger that it had in its hand has some poison on it. There's a black liquid on there. Um, it doesn't look like it has any more. It looks like the dagger was dipped into it. Um, but you do find another glass, a uh, little bobble of uh, that same black tar-like liquid you found that Kraken had earlier. Nice. I'm going to pocket that. Okay. You guys want to do anything else? Um... I would like to, to go ahead. We need to search the ship to see if there are any more of them on board. Yeah, we should probably do that. Yeah. So uh, we, I immediately run towards wherever C knows is staying. Okay. Yeah, he's he's downstairs in the Yep. Yeah, we search, search the, the ship. ship. Search All right, the yeah. ship. Um unfortunately you don't find anything else in the ship. You don't find any extra members. Or any extra figures or people or anything like that. Is the crew all safe? Uh, yeah, uh, the, all the ones that are awake. The other, the ones that are passed out are, I guess, just <laughs> passed at out. anyone else's mercy. But are they alive. <laughs> They're all. All your crew is alive. <laughs> okay. <yeah>. <laughs> I would like to roll to draw a dick on one of their faces. <laughs> How many of them have been replaced with crow men? <laughs> um, after crying. after a thorough search of both the conscious and unconscious members of the crew. Everyone seems to be who they are. <laughs> <laughs> like um, for your cavity, sir. I go, I go back up to my chamber mm -hmm. and I'm going to drag the corpse of the crow man out to the top deck. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the biggest feather off of his tail. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah, I'm, they're pretty, they're large. Yeah, I'm going to oh. pluck one out. I'm going to take the feather out of my hat and then put that in my hat. Okay. I'm okay. going to take some more feathers as well for arrow practice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, cool. I, I just start yanking fistfuls of feathers out. Yes. I, I okay. want to pluck him. Uh, some, of the, <laughs> some of the members that are still alive, um, ones are, uh, everyone's pretty wasted, so yeah. some of them see you and immediately go to hurl outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other ones just kind of look disgusted and walk away. Okay. I just, I don't want to fully pluck him. I just want to yank out some fistfuls of feathers, okay. whatever, whatever Theron needs. And yeah. then I want to tie a rope around oh, his ankle man. and I want to tie it to the foremast of the ship. Okay. So that there is, we're going to need him in the morning. <laughs> so don't, don't desecrate his body. No, no, no. This is just, you know, we're, it's like we're selling a chicken. Okay. <laughs> We're hanging it up in the front window. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's get the biggest, nicest feather. Okay. Anyone else doing anything for the rest of the night? I uh, go up top and I just look up at the sails just to make sure there aren't any more uh, crows perched up there. Uh, give me they a perception are crows. check. You, you look up at the crow's nest to yeah, see if exactly. there are any in there? <laughs> <laughs> Takes it quite literally. <laughs> it's a bit on the nose there. 16. 16. Uh, you don't see anything from down there. That's kind of how our DM rolls, so good on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Sweet. After that adrenaline rush wears off, I um, I pass the fuck out. Okay. Uh, what time is it? And what time are we supposed to be? It's like two o'clock in the morning. And we're supposed to be at. Uh, he just said morning. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I crashed for like four hours. I don't take yes. Yeah. Well, Crashing. what's the, what's the shortest you could take for a long rest? Does it have to be eight hours? I eight think hours. long rest is is what. Eight hours for a long rest. Yeah, yeah. Just eight but hours. you can keep watch for two hours, and this okay. all happened at the beginning of the first watch. So, okay. Well, I mean, he said it's like two a.m., so I'll t- I'll take a short rest because we got a yeah got an early morning ahead of us. I, I mean, I kind of want to take a long rest. I will also <laughs> I will also take a long rest. I mean, yeah. we're gonna miss our meeting. Wait, what, what, time, what time is the meeting? If it's two, and we sleep for eight hours. Ten o'clock, still morning. Yeah, then we got to walk there. It's it's not, we're getting real close noon. to noon. Uh, <laughs> I go to sleep until I'm woken up. <laughs> Immediately upon ending my short rest, I go wake up. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I just want to. I want to change to my spells. All right. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. That's fine. You can. I mean, you can stay on the ship. We're just going to meet with James. If you want to take your finish your long rest. All right. Yep. So sunrise comes. Right. And did you sleep more than an hour? Or did you just took the one, the short rest. I took the short rest. Okay. Uh, you try to rub sleep out of your eyes or you feel a little, uh, lethargic. Um, can I do hit die? Yeah, you can do your hit die, but you do feel pretty exhausted. Cause you have one point of exhaustion. All right. All right. Um, but as the morning comes, you do notice that there seems to be someone standing, um, on the pier outside of the ramp to your ship. Uh, just waiting. Looks like just a young man, um, just stand there waiting, kind of facing the ship. Interesting. Say hello, young man. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, little boy. Uh, He says, uh, I'm looking for Captain Kraken. You're looking at him. He says, all right. um, Much apologies. Um, Lord Mayor James says he he apologizes for having to miss his meeting, but he had business to attend to. um, And he will uh, he will come back when as soon as he can. Um, but hmm. please, you uh, you and your crew are, are free to move about wherever you please, um, but please return to him. Um, return back here uh, as soon as you can. I uh, say, so, uh, when do you think I can speak with him? Um, he may be gone for a few days. A few days. Okay. And uh, not that I distrust him, but... Okay, I say, okay, thank you. <laughs> and I go back and talk to the crew and tell them what I... Okay. Um, I think we should uh, go check on James. Some guy said he's not there, but I just want to double check, so... Oh, uh, yeah. That's fine with me. So, I kind of want to uh, cast Speak with Dead on the crow. Can we talk to the crow? Does it know... The dead crow? Yeah. Sure. I mean, do you pull it down from the... Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Get down from the, the mast. <laughs> now that we're done <laughs> butchering it and um, defeathering it. While they do that, I, I kind of work on my Fletcher. And I mean, my... I assume we want to try to figure out, if we can, where the crows came from. The murder. So, the murder. Are, are you are you concerned for the mayor, or are you just... I, I don't know. I mean, just because someone tells you that somebody's busy doesn't... I mean, I don't, I don't know. Okay, kid. Sure. Oh, yeah. there's some weird stuff's going on. I mean, I think it's weird seemed, that we don't care about shaken. the assassins at all, really. I mean, what? <laughs> I don't seem that interested. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, if that's all they can bring to the table. I, yeah. I, mean, I thought they were good at killing people. <laughs> don't taunt the DM. <laughs> <laughs> if they could just bring a dragon next time. <laughs> Well, right, guys, so, this has been really fun traveling with y'all. I'm going to jump out before we get murdered by a dragon crows. <laughs> All right, so you guys pull the body up, um, and you cast Speak with, with dead. dead. We can ask it five questions. Okay. Um, the Are corpse, you going to the mall later? The corpse. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? <laughs> Where did you get that dashing cloak? All right, that's three that yep. we've wasted. <laughs> <laughs> it says no, no, and yes. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so you cast the spell, um, and its eyes open up, and it's, it's this, this eerie, <laughs> lifeless, almost featherless, <laughs> cut up and bled out body of a crow. Um, 
looks over at you, uh, just laying there still tied up. Um, but he just looks at you. Uh, I guess first we want to know. Well, I guess, was there any? Do we? Is there anyone on the ship? We left. We took everyone off the ship, so they could have just walked on. Yeah, yeah. the ship was empty. Okay. Um. Ask it who its target was. Yeah, who you know who were you? Okay, who's your who was his target? Who was his target? Um, who was your target, Crow? Um, it just replies, "Iron bastards." Hmm. We should change our name, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we are now the Copper Bastards. <laughs> should we ask it like who sent it? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's going to be the murder. Yeah. Um, we need to know like where his hideout is. Yes, location information. Where his boss stays. You know things that what can use to kill them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, see if you can find out where it came from. Like where, where it's uh, when the next attack is planned as well. It can't actually talk about future. It can't speculate on future events. Okay, it's only prior knowledge. Yeah, the course knows only what it knew in life. Hmm. Well, I mean, if it was planned out, if he was included in those plans, I guess that's true. But just ask him where, ask him where his boss stays. Okay, where, where? I mean, any of us can ask him. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't want to waste your questions. That's true. So. Where is your, where does your boss, Look, where is his hideout? Where is his, where is his location? Uh, it says nowhere. What is the name of your boss? The murder. This is like a we are Negan thing. Apparently. <laughs> ask him about the cloud. <laughs> don't ask him about the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> He's going to be like, tell me about the cloud. He's like, what cloud? <laughs> um, telling you, man. The cloud. <laughs> tell him, ask him where his friend stays. Because then if we can find his friend. Or like where his friend yeah, the the guy that was helping him. Where, he where his partner where, went. Yeah, where. Well, he can't speculate. I don't know if that would be. I mean, where where they were? They came from somewhere. Like and their moms. We can go check out wherever they were stationed before they came to find us. You could ask where he was before he came to Newport or Newport. Ask him where his home is. Where's, Where's your home, Where's Crow? You the murder is everywhere. Hmm. It's a saucy little bastard. <laughs> he is. <laughs> I'm glad I stabbed him multiple times. <laughs> Got one more. Suck it, bitch. I mean, you could cast the spell again if we wanted more questions, right? Or it doesn't limit you. No, the spell fails if the corpse was the target of the spell within the last 10 days. So you oh, can try okay. to preserve it for 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> we need a large um, slab of ice. Just, just as a note, uh, Blake... The corpse knows only what it knew in life, including the languages it knew. Answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive, and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer if you're hostile to it or recognizes you as an enemy. Mm. Okay. Also, you have one question left. Okay, then I cast... Um, <laughs> Do you care to be diddled again? <laughs> <laughs> what if I cast a truth spell? Would it have to tell me the truth at that point? Can the corpse be affected by a truth <laughs> spell? <laughs> spells. Are the, um, is that two concentrations? No, speak with dead is actually not a concentration spell. Oh well, then okay. What, what, is it zone of truth? Is that what? zone of truth? Yeah. Let me read zone of truth and see how this works. <laughs> These stack. He <laughs> could still has, be. He could. He could just not answer. Right. So he wait. has no compulsion to. Yeah, but he couldn't lie to us. Um. Uh, I mean, sure, if you wanted to. Okay, why not zone of truth? Boom. <laughs> For our ask, last question, ask him what street he lives on. Like so, what cross what cross streets does he live on? <laughs> when he does zone of truth, he has to make a charisma check or something. What's, Let's see. What's the address? I don't think a body can do it. How does that? Yeah. How does a corpse make a save? He it just automatically he fails. Yeah, oh, okay. we'll say that. <laughs> ask him. Ask him the address that he was staying at when he was sent to come get us. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I'm trying know. to think it's like real specific to ask him. <laughs> what are you asking? Is that you At this point, you feel like the duration of the spell ask will be him, ending ask soon. Ask him if if uh, if it's over, like if if the murder is done. I don't. That's that's a bad that, question. That's a terrible I mean, question. Yeah. Okay, got it. It's not going to end until we're dead or they're dead. 
Ask him about I'm both Keith the and Craig cloud. and let you know that that's a terrible question. Yeah, no. Because <laughs> you guys are all encompassed in this 15 foot zone of truth at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Ask him if they, in my honest opinion, you're an idiot. <laughs> Ask him if they travel by cloud. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, don't ask. Is that, that. a terrible question? Yeah. That, are there even worse questions? Question. Are there more of his <laughs> companions in the city in Pike? Pike, Pike. At this point, you kind of see the corpse somehow uh, almost smile a little bit, and it says yes, and then the spirit of it fades, and you guys see it breathe. It's Spear it out into the sky. Time to go find a bunch of crows and murder them. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go murder, murder of murders. Yep. Yep. And uh, at that point, I we're like going to have to end it right there, guys. Uh, yep. Uh, ended with the a five End of episode 11 of Bards and Nobles. Make sure to check us out on www.bardsandnobles.com, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, um, and Facebook, all of, Twitter, yep. Instagram. Be sure to check out um, a free trial for Audible, audibletrial.com backslash bards. No, forward slash bards. Forward slash, forward slash bards. Yeah. It's not a local directory. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Happy New Bye. Year. Well, we stand here in a row, looking like a bunch of heroes. I know that deep inside, nothing more but a bunch of zeros. Yeah!